Are you stepping into the role of principal and beginning to feel the weight of that responsibility? Well, in today's episode, we're going to explore three essential strategies that every principal must know and be able to do to lead their school to success. So stick around to the end of this episode because you'll not only walk away with those skills, but also some practical strategies that you could implement tomorrow and immediately make an impact. So let's dive in, grab that pen, grab that piece of paper and get ready to take some notes because we're going to start right now. Hey everyone, Gordon Emerson here, superintendent of schools and Gallup certified strengths coach. And on this channel, we leverage my experience from classroom teacher to school district superintendent to help you go further, faster in your educational journey. If this is in fact your first time with us, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as that bell notification so you don't miss any cool updates or any of our latest episodes or content. Welcome in everybody. So at the time of the recording of this episode, it's fall, it's the beginning of the school year, and I just wanted to share some thoughts, share some, hopefully some inspiration for principals, for those leaders who are tasked with leading a school, leading a school community. I wanna give you just some, some rock solid strategies that you will be able to use effectively to lead your school to where I know you wanna take it. You wanna transform. You want to succeed. You want your students to be successful. You want your staff to be successful. So in today's episode, we're going to jump right in. We're going to share three essential strategies, leadership strategies, along with some practical applications that you can take and you can imp incorporate right away. So without further ado, let's jump right in with strategy number one. All right. So right away, the first thing that you want to be, you want to be crystal clear around is your leadership and your vision. And you want to begin to articulate what that vision is. Where do you see the school going? Where do you see your scholars excelling? Where do you see the opportunities to grow and build on the skills, the knowledge and capacity of your staff? Articulating that vision is critical because as you articulate it, then people begin to crystallize. They begin to, they begin to make meaning. They begin to make sense of where is it that the principal wants us to go and how can I play a role in that? How can I be a part of that? How can I support that vision? But we as leaders, and most notably you as a leader, you have to be crystal clear about how you articulate that. And so as you think about what that vision is, how does that vision align to the district's goals and responsibilities? How does that vision align to the things that are valued by your school community, incorporating that in, and then how, also critically important, how does it align with who you are, your core as a leader? You wanna incorporate these things into your vision. And the concrete strategy that I want you to think about building is building a series of vision casting meetings. So what does that mean? Vision casting is all about telling people, telling people what you want, where you want to go, how you think you'll get there, what you need from people in order to realize that vision, but articulating it in a number of different ways in different venues, parent teacher organization meetings, staff meetings, community town halls, back to school nights, open house, all these different venues, your student leadership groups, all these different groups need to hear what your vision is. And so being intentional about saying, I want to share my vision far and wide is going to help kind of accelerate, if you will. It's going to help you accelerate where you want to go and that much faster because when people start to know what your vision is, if they hear it and they can believe it and then they can help to support it, it will supercharge your progress. So make sure you're clear on your leadership, make sure you're starting to vision and then build out a vision casting meeting schedule. Look at that calendar and see when those events and those activities are going to be because you want to do it frequently. The more times people hear it, the more that they'll begin to internalize it and the more they'll be able to say, what role can I play and how can I support? And that's going to be critical step number one for you as a principal to be successful. 
Now, the second thing you want to think about and you want to immediately put strategies in place to incorporate how you'll do this is you got to be an effective communicator with all of the different constituency groups and stakeholder groups that we just talked about in strategy number one. When we talked about vision casting, we talked about all those different groups, whether they're parents, whether they're staff, whether they're your scholars, whether it's your community, but you want to be an effective communicator. You want people to hear from you. You want to be able to share your ideas. You want to share your thoughts. You want to be able to share your successes, the successes of your students, the successes of your staff. You have to be the master communicator of that. You've got to disseminate and share that information broadly with as many people as possible because that helps to be an effective communicator. And one of the most, one of the best strategies that you could ever have to build trust, to build robust communication, to be able to develop clear ways of connecting with people is have an open door policy. That's a concrete strategy that you could literally employ tomorrow. It's having an open door policy. It doesn't have to be 24 hours a day, doesn't have to be seven days a week, but share with people. During this period of time, from this time to this time, on these days, on Mondays, on Wednesdays, whatever day works, whatever days work, and whatever time window works, you're going to have an open door policy where as people come in, they can share their ideas, they can share their thoughts, you can have conversation, you can communicate back and forth, they share your idea, they share their ideas, you share your ideas, but you start to build robust systems by which your message gets out but you also receive feedback because being an effective communicator, having effective communication is not one way. It's not just your way, but it's me sharing, but also me receiving and then me thinking about how I can then be responsive to that feedback. So effective communication is recognizing all those different stakeholder groups and then creating real meaningful, tangible ways to be able to communicate in a two way dialogue. That's how you build trust. That's how you build relationships. And that's how you build enduring connections that will help you be able to transform the school and take it where you want to go. And that's strategy number two. So before we move to strategy number three, share with us in the comments below, what's a key strategy that you will use to be able to develop effective communication? What types of systems can you put in place? What types of structures will you incorporate? Will you use the open door policy? And if not the open door policy, what other ideas do you have? Share those with us in the comments below. I know the members of our community will greatly benefit from your feedback and your input. Share that within the comments below and let's move to strategy number three. When it comes to school leadership, instructional leadership is essential. It is critical to be the instructional leader of your campus and have that focus on instructional leadership. So you are looking at what does good instruction look like? What are the types of professional development opportunities that our staff will need to, for them to be successful? What are the resources and the supports that staff and students will need? This is why you have been asked to lead the school because we believe in you and in, in your ability to be able to lead a group, support a group, grow, stretch, hold accountable a group of educators for the betterment of advancing the academic and social emotional development of a group of students. And in order to do that, tier one, level one, most important critically for you is to be an instructional leader. And so when you think about what are the professional development opportunities that my staff's gonna need? What are the types of resources and systems and structures that I'm gonna need to put in place? Who are my kids and how do I best meet their needs? A concrete strategy to be an effective instructional leader is to incorporate the use of instructional rounds. An instructional rounds is the opportunity for you to go around to your different classrooms, to go around to your different segments of your campus and look observe, take some notes around what does instructional practice look like? 
Now, there are different ways and different variations of how people do instructional rounds, but let me share with you how I've done instructional rounds and how I've seen it to be most effective. First and foremost is when you're doing instructional rounds, you gotta have a clear focus of what it is in fact you're looking for. And so when you're clear about what your look for's are, now you're going into classrooms, you're going into departments with a specific lens, a specific view, and you're looking for those types of things. So let's say your look for's that day are gonna be elements of effective student engagement. That's the lens that you're gonna go in and you're gonna look for. And then as you do that, now you can identify through that very, very specific focus and that very specific frame, here are elements of effective practice that I'm seeing. I'm seeing good student questioning. I'm seeing good student interaction. I'm seeing gradual release of responsibility where students are taking ownership and you're noting that. And if you're walking with other leaders, if you're walking with other staff members, you're noting that together as you're, as you're visiting one classroom and you're going to the next classroom and then you start to talk a little bit and you make meaning in those instructional rounds is really about identifying best practice. And then at the end, you debrief, you debrief with your group, you debrief with yourself if, you, if it's just you, and, but you know what those best practices are. And then the most effective piece is as you talk through and you identify what those best practices are, you then memorialize them. You put it down on a piece of paper, you put it down in an email, and you push that back out to your staff. You push that back out and you say, hey, everybody, it was a great job today. These are all the great things we saw. Best practices, do this, incorporate this. Two things happen when you do that with your instructional rounds and you debrief and then you share those best practices. Two things happen. Number one, the staff members whose classrooms you visited where you noted those best practices, they now have been reaffirmed that they are using effective instructional practices, best practices. They are going to want to reinforce and do that more and more and more because you want those best practices replicated as much as possible because they're good for kids and they're good for learning. Second thing that happens is those staff members who didn't have those best practices in place that day, they'll do their own self-assessment. They'll say, I do use those best practices and I'm gonna start to use them more frequently or I'm not using those yet, but I'm gonna go find out who is so I can use them too. All of those scenarios and all of those outcomes, you're happy with. As an instructional leader, you want that. You want that level of awareness. You want that level of self-reflection because you want your staff always thinking, how do we get better? How do we get better? And then if you start to notice there are some gaps in what your staff can or can't do, now you've identified areas of professional development to focus on. Now you've identified areas of support that you could provide more resource around, trainings, seminars, PD, conferences, whatever those things are and whatever your budget and your resources can support. But now you're having a very, very robust process to make sense of what your instructional leadership system, what your instructional leadership cycle, what your cycle of inquiry is, and now you are looking at it through the lens of how do I move performance for my students and for my staff? And those are best practices. So take those three strategies and incorporate them. And if you're looking for more strategies about how you can be that much more effective as a school level leader, you can check out this next video right here It'll give you additional tips about how to be an effective school leader. If you've made it to this point in the video, thank you very much for hanging with us. I'm hoping that you got value. And if you did make it to this point, again, don't forget, hit that subscribe button. If you haven't already, hit the like button, share this, share it with a friend, share it with 10 friends. We want to get this information out to as many educators as possible. Right? And for more information about coaching or our newsletter or anything like that, check the description below. And want to thank you again for what you do and who you lead and who you inspire every day in your classrooms and on your campuses. Education is the best profession in the world. And we want to continue to remind ourselves of that every single day. Thank you again for your support. Check those descriptions and check out this next video. It's a great one as well. And we'll see you on our next one. Thanks, everyone. Be well.